Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Overwatch Collective. Here are your hosts, Jesse Coulter and Gregory Grogan. Episode 14. <laughs> he had to whisper that to me. How's it going, everybody? Season 3, episode 14. Um, today is Tuesday, and we got about a few days left before the fundraiser. I know you guys are going to be hearing this afterwards, but... Um, we will let you know how it goes, I guess. Yeah. Big uh, <laughs> second annual funders are coming up in, uh, shoot, well, what is it, already it? four days, five days? Yeah. By the time this comes out, it already have happened, but yeah. <laughs> um, but today we have a, an awesome guest. Uh, so Brad actually reached out to us. Um, and I remember, I don't know why I vividly remember this, but I was at like Toyota getting my truck fixed. And he's like, hey, like, <laughs> I got to, like, get, let's get on a call. So I was like, all right. So I talked to him for like 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes. And, uh, I was like, dude, this sounds amazing. You know, let's get you on a podcast. And he was like, nope, Stuart's the one to get on a podcast. And uh, <laughs> might be wrong, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, cool, sounds good. So we finally got this set up. Um, but for those that are listening, so Stuart uh, with Get Safe, um, you know, their motto is uh, changing mindsets, changing outcomes. And uh, it's basically a comprehensive training um, tar- that target individuals, uh, their families, and communities on a, a grand scale. So uh, Stuart did a whole bunch of martial arts um, prior to starting this and figured, you know, the community can help benefit from this. So uh, without further ado, I mean, uh, before that, actually, um, so Sponsors. Mark, uh, Mark Poyer, he started his own uh, brand, right? His own reality um, company, I guess. And he's working with other people. So if you want to buy a house now, yeah, you can come through us and we can put you in touch or in touch with Mark and, um, that 20% that we talked about with three step realty still applies, but it's just through Mark. So, yep. So, three step realty group was one of our sponsors for the our second annual fundraiser. Mark was working for them at the time, uh, where any uh, sale or uh, it's a 20% of the commission. Yeah. So, make. basically, the broker and lender, whatever their commission is, they would donate 20% back to our nonprofit. Um, so, now we're not mentioning three step realty group since the fundraiser is done by this time that it comes out it's weird uh foreseeing the future yeah <laughs> um but now we have a uh, uh another company involved so if you're listening to this right now uh and you're looking to buy or sell a home within the state of california please let us know we'll get you in contact with uh mark and his new team they'll take care of you and then 20 percent of the commission that they receive comes back to us ultimately paying for our audience to go to therapy and retreats and um, supporting our podcast. So yeah. Semper. Cool. Well, Stuart, welcome. Great. Hey, thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, you may second thought Brad, but I'm glad I'm here. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I started the agency many moons ago, 1993. But what we do is we also, we work with civilian population. So we've done hundreds of thousands of trainings, whether it's uh, individuals with disabilities, uh, general population, safety, self-defense, uh, awareness, situational awareness, kids, bullying prevention, survivors of sexual assault, domestic violence, human trafficking. But we also have a robust law enforcement side. We're working with working with teaching law enforcement cues for working people with disabilities, developmental disabilities, mental health, substance abuse, so we can be less than lethal out there. So we have that. We have implicit bias, cultural diversity. We have a youth in crisis, uh, a crisis intervention, which is nowadays, as you guys can see, the world is changing. So there's a lot of different things that go on that we want to give officers tips on how to maybe communicate and interact. And so it's kind of so that's what kind of makes us a little different. We when we have a training for whether it's law enforcement or community, we'll send a law enforcement officer or a former law enforcement officer and a civilian. And so it gives that community and law enforcement blend and they get two perspectives, which is great. A lot of times, a lot of law enforcement training is straight law enforcement and it, it you lose a perspective side of it. So that's kind of what we do quite a bit. And it's, uh, you know, so far it's working. Um, I did want to say, I remember uh, I was listening to one of your podcasts and uh, one of the guys on there had just said, I think it was one of the guys, not one of you two, had just came back and had a sore arm from an arm bar from an MMA professional. 
I'm not sure that was, um, but um, I have a story that's similar because yesterday I came back from a colonoscopy yesterday. So uh, anyway, that's big. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Yeah, pun intended. Yeah, that's yeah. big. <laughs> but I do want to say because you're, you know, I know most of your audience are the alphas and type A's. Do get that checked because a lot of times we forget about it, and that's for men and women. And these things call a little polyp, which is like a little bump, and if they don't take it out, at then it can turn into a pretty nasty cancer. So that's my health uh psa for today all oh, right wow. let's move it on anyway yeah so we're we're just uh our ultimate call we have a bridge to the divide program which is trying to do a bridge that divide between civilians and law enforcement it's building that community and so we do is you know we go out and talk about when i'm out in the community i talk about what law enforcement's actions were and i'd have parents uh, i had a lady she her son was autistic or has autism and she said um you know, I was out there and my, I needed help with my son. And this law enforcement officer came up and said, what can I do to help? And she goes, can you believe that? I go, oh, my God, that's like perfect. Who knows your kid better? But she was angry about it and it made no sense. And, you know, obviously when we laid it out, it's like who can give the best direction? So it's the high expectations that I think community has of our civilians have of law enforcement. You know, they're supposed to be enforcers are supposed to be guardians, protectors, therapists, you know, they can't do all that. You know, we put ordinary individuals into extraordinary situations, such as, you know, running in a nighttime on some guy is tweaked out on something that's, you know, twice the size of the officer. So those are the things we try and explain. And then we talk to our law enforcement, like posture, you know, so, so Jess, you're a law enforcement officer and you have, oh, Greg. <laughs> Okay. 50 50 <laughs> shot yeah. darn it and I, you know that's my luck here it goes i'm wrong it's so. like roulette yeah <laughs> so i missed it but yeah you have out there and you're in a badge right and you have a sometimes an exterior vest on and we forget that the you know the popular civilians see it as well that guy looks so militaristic and he stands up and we're just the you know the exterior vests are for mostly orthopedic posture <laughs> taking the weight off your shoulders your back and they don't they don't know that. So we talk about that. We have a gentleman, Bob, he's a training. He's training with us. He was a law enforcement officer for 26 years. He he's five foot six or seven. I hope it's I hope it's you know, I'm not getting it wrong, Bob. But he goes I, and he's Asian. He goes, I never realized I'm a thin guy. I'm old, small. I never thought anyone was afraid of me until I actually spoke to some of the civilians that I would talk to. And they were afraid of the badge, the gun that I carry. And I never thought of it. So it's sometimes how we carry ourselves with our postures that you know we don't realize because we're used to seeing guns on people we're used to seeing badges and it doesn't make us nervous every time we walk by somebody and then the other thing is we talk about what everyone wants and i guarantee you if we put a group of civilians in one room and law enforcement in the other they're all going to write a list if we write a list of 10 they're going to want the same thing almost they want to be respected they want to be seen they want to be heard and all that comes together once then it, it would be nine out of ten but ultimately, that's how we create understanding between us. So, so those are the things we're trying to do. We're trying to bring in this program into high schools, middle schools also, because we want them to feel comfortable speaking to law enforcement. Because law enforcement is is an aid. And, you know, and we see some bad incidents on TV, but I don't know. I got to tell you, 95% of the people I know are amazing. You know, they'll run into a building. They'll do whatever it takes to perform their job and make someone sure they're safe without thought of risk of their life. But we want to build that communication. You know, we saw Texas happen. And the day after all these posts came in, oh, he was posting on social media and if, if they knew. And so that means the communication is there's a breakdown. And our program is not just about active shooter. It's about bully prevention. It's about suicide prevention. It's about abuse prevention. The more communication we can have between higher ups and law enforcement with with community. We have a uh, and I use community, even though law enforcement is community. Um, but sometimes when we talk to civilians, they feel like they're being isolated into a militaristic term. So we just adjust that. But we, we some of these colleges that we perform safety seminars, they want safety so they don't have to call the police because they're afraid of them. And that's not right. Yeah. And that's because they don't maybe know them. You know, I mean, you know, it's, you know, getting to know them. They see the badge. They see with the news feeds. And, you know, news there's, I, I tell people, there's millions of positive interactions. People, you know, let people go. People do extra special things, but we don't see that as much because it's, you know, the news likes to highlight 
the big incidents. And so I think law enforcement gets, gets an unfair shake. And I feel that. And I also feel, you know, civilians, because law enforcement tend to not like some of the things they see and not, don't understand it. I remember we're at a use of force thing. And then the guy goes, oh, why, do, why is the why is that someone I pulled them over get so squirrely? Well, it's scary. <laughs> you know, you get white coat syndrome. You know, when you go to the doctor, everyone's blood pressure elevates. Well, you get the lights and sirens, you know, you know, yeah, coat yeah. system. So it's, I think it's just, I don't know. I really just, I feel like our community is divided. And I feel like uh, what our ultimate goal is get safe. And we have some amazing people and you've met one, Brad, and, you know, we have so many great trainers and um, uh, staff that just cares that if we can, we have to feel your way to build this community back together, that we are community all together, because it's just this divide is hard. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you guys got anything? <laughs> no, <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, without getting like too political, it's like, you know, you see something on the news, right? And like you said, they highlight all the negative things that happen around, you know, the nation with, you know, cops and what they do in their job. And, and then it's like people watch this, you know, from kids to older you know men and women and then they build this disrespect towards these people that they have they don't even know yeah so you know when they get pulled over or you know they meet you know, they talk to them on the street or just randomly see them it's like yeah you get that sense of uncomfortability and whatnot and then it's like you automatically just don't want to be around them because what you see on the news or whatnot when this guy could you know hug a teddy bear and not let go forever and you know <laughs> Are you supposed so, to say that publicly? But that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't yeah. care. I I completely agree. And I I see it all the time at work where people just like, like they they see you with a a badge, a gun, and a uniform, and you're like, dude, I'm like one of the nicest people in the world. Yeah, and but, that's what it's it's that, it, and we and that's one of the things we talk about in class. We tell the officers not to take it, and the sheriff deputies not to take it personally, because they don't know you. So I have a friend who's a sergeant uh, in Santa Ana. And she says, what do you do? Her friend asked her, what do you do if someone flips you off? Just smile and keep going. They don't know me. And that's what it is. You know, it's it's sometimes hard not to. And, you know, I miss the days of, you know, now we change it up. But, you know, where you say yes, no, thank you, please. When you're pulled over, I know when I I was the most polite person when I pulled, got pulled over. And it's just it changes now, you know, and, and, uh, there's a guy, a gentleman, he teaches class in garden Grove and his kids are at risk and he gives them, he, you know, he's a very law enforcement advocate pro pro law enforcement and safety. And he gives these kids tools on how to, what to do if you get pulled over. Well, one day the kid ran in and said, Hey, Hey, you're not going to believe this. You know, I got pulled over and I didn't get a ticket. And he goes, well, what did you do? I did what you said. I just put my hands up here and I said, yes, sir. No, sir. And they said, okay, just slow it down next time. So there's that, you know, there every there was a mutual respect between each other. And that's what we're looking for. You know, at times you got to get a ticket, you know, and that's what we talk to parents too. Cause here's what I can guarantee you. If I if I, if, if my wife gets pulled over and well, no, I'll, I'll take that back because she knows, understands why. Well, <laughs> she's gonna listen oh. to this and be like, uh 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 uh, uh. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, she's right behind me. Is she right behind me? Um, I can't tell with the zoom background, but um, but no, it's if a parent gets pulled over, we tell them if you get pulled over and get a speeding ticket, most likely, and your child's in the car, you're not going to drive away and say, you know, that nice officer gave me a ticket to help me to be safe. You're probably going to go, oh, I can't believe this. I don't deserve this. I'm going to fight that, that big jerk. Well, that starts breeding that. So then there's a learned behavior there. All of a sudden they start realizing. So we tell them that. And then generational. Yes. And then I use this a lot and I've used it before on another podcast, no offense, but I, I work, you know, as a reserve deputy, we work fairs. That's kind of one of our mandatory. We do a lot of work, but different things, but that's one that we have to do. And I can't tell you how many times we walk by and you'll hear a parent say, you see that man over there with the gun and badge, he's going to arrest you if you don't eat your vegetables. Okay. And then the next step, you see that man over there, he's our hero. And I admit, yes, firefighters are unusually good looking, but why are they the heroes? And then cops just aren't, you know, it's like, <laughs> You know, so it's that. And then, you know, so that's where those behaviors come and stem as well, where they get fearful of us, where it, and then I remember that I was working with an old salty jail deputy and he was like, listen, man, I'm going to arrest you, you know, <laughs> if you keep saying that, because it, it does, it makes it, the kids fear us. We want them to embrace us. You know, they want, if you need help, you call whatever you need, lost, hurt, or scared. We're always, and that's what we do a lot in our trainings. We tell people lost, hurt, or scared. Yeah, we get some 
people in our classes to say, well, I had this incident and it's not a good incident. It was, you know, the officer wasn't nice and mean. And it's like, but I think those, those times are dwindling, I hope, because I know the, like the new recruits that we get that work the fairs, they're young jail deputies and it's different. They're, they're different. I think they're, they're I don't know, there's something different about them that there's, there's not that whole, like, I want to go knock heads down different things and listen. I mean, they're tough for sure, but, but it's something where I think there is a change happening. Yeah. I think it's just a completely different culture and the way that recruits are taught in the Academy based on the times that we're in with the country. Yeah. Um, so I, I have a couple of questions about get safe. So you mentioned you started it in 1993 and you're the CEO and founder. Yeah. I was, I was 10 years old when I started it. Is that what you're so trying was, to get at? Yeah. So I was born in 1993. <laughs> Whatever. So you're 10 uh, years old. <laughs> right. When you said that earlier, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to have to bring this up. And oh my yeah. God. You're so, mean. <laughs> um, so you started get safe and is it a company LLC nonprofit? Just maybe just give like a little bit of background on yeah. that for the, the listeners. So we have always functioned as a nonprofit. When I started, I didn't know what a nonprofit was. And everyone says, you're doing nonprofit work because we just, I'm not looking for a profit. I'm looking for the bottom line. I believe in human capital. The more money we make, the more we hire. So, and giving people opportunities to help out there. So we are a nonprofit. We have a 501c3, but that started in 97. So it's kind of a split thing. And, um, but yes, it's, I'm not a good nonprofit. Like you guys are doing a fundraiser. We're going to push more. Because I do feel what we're trying to do with the Bridge of Divide is a national campaign. And we want to see it. We want to help other schools, other law enforcement departments, anyone who would want our trainings, you know, to come out. And and we're just looking at building it across. So, yes, there's definitely a 501c aspect of it. Um, I applaud you guys doing the fundraiser. I hope this weekend success for you. And then it is for, you said it's for therapeutic aspects for military, law enforcement. Yeah, the uh the community. So as of now we've we've already paid for uh two spouses of first responders to go through eleven th- therapy sessions. Nice. We're currently um assisting four. Mm-hmm. Um they're about it, actually tonight's their second session, and then we have another uh a police officer that we've already paid to go to one session. Um and all the funds, the donation grants, everything that we get goes back to paying for therapy retreats and then also the the podcast equipment the yeah. the headphones the mics the subscriptions that you have to pay for all that so yeah. well it's good pretty fancy by the way but yeah no what you're doing is awesome because i made a commitment to get safe's training because i don't know we're we're post certified on all our trainings peace officer standard trainings as i know you're familiar with because you're in california um to put in self-care because it is, doesn't make sense that more officers die by their own weapon than out in the field. And and finding therapy is hard. Uh, we had a, one of our deputies training down south. I won't mention the department's name, but he says, yeah, I went in there. I walked in to talk to them. They had a counselor on, on the premises. And before I even got out the door, everyone knew I was there. And then you ask him, are you going to go back? No, I'm not. And that's the thing, you know. So I, I'm, I'm hoping it gets better. It really has to be from the command staff down to really make things different. I mean, I've heard guys say, oh, man, I saw my buddy. He worked 35 years hard charger. And all he did is he see him walking out the door with a box of stuff. And that was up north by you. Um, a box of stuff. That's how they sent him off. And we need to be better at that. It, it, it's a hard job. You see lots of really terrible things. And I don't think we're as open. So doing that is awesome. We have a great therapist that we refer out down here. Um, who specializes working with law enforcement and fire as well. And um, it, it's needed, you know, and what you're doing for the spouses is awesome because, you know, it's a vicarious trauma that they feel as well, you know, yeah. seeing things. And um, the kids also, they, you know, they now know if daddy, someone comes to them, calls them out at a school and, uh, and it's about their dad. And there was a story a CHP officer told, he said, yeah, I just went to surprise my kid and the kids were crying by the time they got to the principal's office because they thought something happened to daddy. You don't realize that they internalize that as well when daddy leaves because you see it on TV so much. You don't know if he's coming back. 
So I'm totally believe in a healthy mindset, you know, and those are, that is part of it. So keep doing what you're doing. So thanks. And that's our thing. We put some self-care always in there. Um, and it's good because we get guys who, you know, come up after class and awkwardly talk to, you know, so, you know, you're talking about, you know, the actor shooter and the therapy, <laughs> you know, so it's quiet, but it, because it's not as accepted yet. And I get it. And a lot of people don't want it in their jacket or they feel like it's going to be tra- uh, linked back to them if they go find therapeutic help. And and I get it. So it's but, you know, any way we can get something out there for them. And then also, you know, the work environment. You know, we've talked to officers. I said we've had people say that walking by just a peer, stop them and say, hey, how you doing? Just to say how you're doing. And they say it changed their life because they didn't feel like anyone cared. They were circling the drain. It's not really an environment you can talk about where, hey, I'm, I'm not getting it. I feel bad. I'm getting a divorce, which is pretty prevalent in law enforcement. I am, you know, or your other ways you act out, whether it's drugs and alcohol or different things or lack of sleep. And so all those things we cover in our courses too, just to make sure that you understand some of the things and, and you know, create, fr- create friendships outside of, you know, like you two. I mean, create friendships. Yeah, I know you have the military bond, but create friendships outside of law enforcement, you know, so you have a blend, you know, you get to see a couple parts, but I did have a friend. He said, I went to a neighborhood party and he goes, I was looking around. He was a sheriff's deputy at the time, a detective. And, you know, everyone's all quiet. And finally the guy who's having the party said, Hey, everyone's nervous that you're here because they want to smoke pot. And he goes, Oh, he goes, all right, I guess I can leave if you want. So, I mean, sometimes it backfires. And I even had it happen as a reserve. I went to it was my wife's friends and we go to their house and I, and he goes, Oh, you know, he might be downstairs in the basement or downstairs. And I went to open the door and I couldn't get the door open. And two weeks later, he comes up and he goes, I got to admit, I was smoking a little pot and I was holding the door closed. <laughs> I didn't want you to come in. <laughs> it, was just, it was just really funny, but, uh, that, that happened too. Did you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, so your, your classes for get safe. I know you're based out of Southern California. Um, are they primarily around Southern California and then all over, all over, the all state. over. Yeah, we've done in the last couple of years, about 7,500 law enforcement officers throughout the state. And, and that was kind of, and with COVID, that's not too bad because we got shut down with COVID in person, but yeah. And we also have done Utah state, um, I think it was some police and security and we're looking to do it nationally. We have a national IALA, I I think it's a national certification. They're going to yell at me for not pronouncing it right, but it's a national certification like a post. But yeah, uh, we go all over, you know, Um, and we actually, the funny thing is we a lot of times do more up north than we do down here. And I'm not really sure why, but, but yeah, we travel all over, out of state, you name it. Our guys are ready to uh, male and females. And we also have a, um, I wanted to bring up a dispatch course as well as I, I heard you guys were dispatch friendly. I think that's what Brad was saying, but yeah, yeah it's, yeah. I remember just doing this years ago and I, I don't primarily don't do as many trainings now because we have a, a team, but uh, I remember seeing in, in the dispatch in our room and I just felt like they needed more training because they didn't get as much as law enforcement does. And they're amazing. You know, and I remember a lady, we're talking about people with disabilities and development disabilities and speech impediments or issues with hearing. And she goes, Oh man, I used to always think everyone's drinking. So I just kind of just blew them off a little bit, but I'm going to take a second guess now. And and I kind of owe the, the dispatch world a little bit because when I first came on, you know, I wasn't great on the radio, still probably not great on the radio. So I went up the dispatch, the dispatch area and sat there and listened to the codes and listened to them to the call outs. And I also remember sitting there and having a, one of the deputies pull someone over and the dispatch, okay. And he goes, okay, I'm going in. And we're all sitting there like we're watching this scary movie, like, okay, what's going on? Where is he? What's happening? Because you can't see anything at the time. And it's like, and then he go, and then the dispatcher goes, everything okay? Code four, code four. And he finally gets on. Yeah, it's code four. Leave me alone. But he, they don't know on this side. We know don't know what's going on. It could have yeah. went sideways. So, but what happened, what saved me was then we, I was working a shift and it was, I, it was a big festival of some sort. So there was lots of regulars and, and reserves and, and I did, I mean, I got on the radio and their dispatch was known for ripping you if you got it wrong. And I don't know, she said something and I said, alpha code, hamburger, Bravo, hot dog. I don't even know. I was just, just chattering. And everyone looked at me and my team go, oh my God, they're going to rip you. And, and all of a sudden they go, 10, four, copy that. And they're all, what, <laughs> what you were supposed to be ripped on. And then through the whole festival, people go, I don't know how you got away with that, but I think it's because I spent some time up there. So 
Yeah. I have a special love for dispatch, but our, our dispatch trainers are, they're amazing. They're smart, they're passionate. And so that's why we are a dispatcher. This. How do we uh, kind of navigate to the website? Yeah, uh, uh, just get go to contacts. getsafeusa.com and then info, law enforcement info, and they'll see the dispatch courses. Okay. Yeah, it's something that, you know, it's obviously not, a, there's not a high level of dispatchers, you know, but it's something that it's more of a, I think it's just a moral thing we should have for them because it's, that's a hard job. <laughs> you know, I got to say it's it, when I was up there, I was, in, I was exhausted and a nervous wreck when I left because it's just too much. I'd rather just be in the action and see it and know what's going on than having to guess what's happening. And do I need to send help? Do I need to send fire? Do I need to send EMS? And it's just like, but yeah, it's so yeah, all our classes are listed on our law enforcement site. It's go to get saved and you'll be able to find the law enforcement link. Um, but yeah, it's, and those things are many of them, are, we do Zoom and in person, we really had to push Zoom, we were able to, um, it was, we were fortunate Post had a grant and we collaborated with UCLA on a, it was asynchronous and where, you know, part eight, five hours were online and three hours were in person. So, and it's, uh, it worked, you know, it was good, you know, I think people like in person, but I think we're pretty good on Zoom now, we, we have some pretty entertaining folks <laughs> so i'm trying to make it less boring yeah and those kind of like those podcasts. entertaining folks how many do you have uh employed yeah. through get safe on the law enforcement side we probably have 20 uh and they're you know so what they are is they're contracted instructors so if anyone out there wants to do some side gigs you know it's it's good we have a variation of local and federal officers um, then we have all the therapists as well on the community side and community members that are out there a lot to split it up. But yeah, and then we have, I think probably four or five dispatchers. So it kind of helps obviously having a dispatcher in the room when they were doing it. And, you know, a lot of, uh, they're all have a great background. Some have children with dis development disabilities. Some have just been in the field for X amount of years. And, you know, we have, child crimes detectives we, you name it or it's a broad we have phd fbi agents and you know so it's it's pretty pretty wide variety which we want you know yeah, and as yeah. long as they can you know send the message and our message you know ultimately is to i don't i've always been a big believer you know and you probably know you probably go to these 40 hour courses and it's to me it's just so much and you and the officers and deputies have so much information to retain that if I, we can get the information to them quickly, make it poignant, you know, it doesn't have to be 40 hours. It, literally, I open some classes when I'm there, which my co-trainer hates, but we could probably do this in 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, give you a couple tools, you know, treat people like you want it in the de-escalation, treat people like you want them to treat your family, you know, be nice, listen, you know, if someone's in your face, just back out and realize it's not personal, but it is good to have longer trainings. It's just that I don't like, I'm, I'm the 40 hours just seems so long and then when you leave there then you because you know law enforcement as you know has to do uh, domestic violence sexual assault human trafficking duis you know and those are just some of the shooting driving oh I mean, there's so many things that you have to keep up on that uh, i think if we can make it clear and easier to remember and we you know we give a lot of little card that gives you some pointers and because even our classes we start off we're not trying to make you a therapist by no means we just want you to understand a little bit and not having to be able to diagnose each disability or each mental illness. No, there, there is a baseline of interactions that you can use, you know, the, the communication skills and that we have. And so those are the things we, we, I feel like we do better because I like simple. And I think most of our trainers do. We have some very smarties that like it longer, <laughs> but you know, sorry. yeah. And how, how long are those, are those like two day courses? And then does the, does the department usually reach out or do you reach out to departments and be like, Hey, this is kind of what we can facilitate for training for. We like our, let's say our de-escalation um, CIDT. So it's crisis intervention de-escalation. It has the component of working with people with dis development disabilities, mental illness, substance abuse, the first four hour block, the second four hour block is more of a community de-escalation. So that's an eight hour class. Then, uh, but yes, the departments, a lot of times departments will reach out to us because we're post-certified. So they get that and they don't have to create the program. And a lot of the things we're doing is either mandated or socially mandated in a sense where, so they reach out. So we're doing a, I don't know what department, we're doing a full department on Friday. And a lot of times we'll come in, like LA Sheriff's is going to bring us out 
to do their um, their court systems on the when the courts close. So we'll do quite a few of them. And uh, but yes, it's and then you know then we have we have we run classes you know on different sites. So a lot of times we'll have people who just want to get more education, get another maybe certificate in their file, and they're just trying to enhance their education. So we do a lot of individuals that are just looking for more education as well. And it's like you said, it's it's I want to, you know, ultimately we're, you know, we're I think we're very good at transfer of knowledge. I think we keep it pretty basic, not trying to draw it out too long just to fill content. It's mostly and then we're interactive and we just want to get what their thoughts are. And de-escalation, tell us what your thoughts are. You know, we have people, especially with the new woke, you know, with woke culture <laughs> and, and pronouns and yeah, we get some salty guys up there what does this have to do with anything well i you know i'm gonna tell you if you misgender someone they're gonna escalate this class is about de-escalation crime in san francisco <laughs> yeah so if you i mean i always say regardless of your views outside the department or you know i had an argument with a person in the community i go i look at it the same as teachers i have small kids their biases should not be in there or their beliefs should not be in the classroom as you know law enforcement you have to our job is to protect and serve a teacher's job is to teach without a biased opinion on anything and where it adds and that's what we do once we start going down the road of well i really believe this well then we're not doing justice to what we're teaching and so it's and that's you know so you know regardless of how our instructors feel about anything coming across is what they need to do you know they just have to this is what it's going to be best for you and ultimately we listen there's we tell them there's so many videos out there there's so many cameras out there and you want to do your best and you know you i mean you probably read the news there's people just just don't make any sense sometimes cops that just say things online or yell at there's someone just got in trouble for posting something about if i'm behind you get out of my way and they use the f word and it's like okay why are you posting this you have a nice job yeah that was <laughs> I mean? the police officer inside the patrol car right yeah that's yeah a video yeah that's so dumb it's exactly why you're yeah. you're jeopardizing you know it's a good job it, yeah i mean if you don't like it then you know it's cool no one's making you do it but remember you gotta i mean if you did that anywhere that's gonna come back at you you're a starbucks employee yeah I just tell these people at coffee, get the heck out if you don't want coffee. It's like, you're not going to last there either. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no. So no anyway. Not going to be employed very long. <laughs> yeah. And that's, so our big things are also, uh, we talk about report writing and use of force incidents because, you know, we always tell people, journal everything as soon as it gets done. You're going to be nervous. You're going to be upset if something, depending on how high level of it is, but journal it. Then go back home and journal it again. The more prepared, the more documented it is, the better you are. Because, I mean, I've talked to officers who said, yeah, I just got the notice that I got to start um, gathering my personal assets. You know, that's the worst news ever. You know, you're you're protecting and serving, trying to do what's right. And then there's people who do what's wrong. But, you know, you never know what the video angle looks like, different things. And to have to gather your personal assets, you know. And, and I always tell people, jot everything down. And just in case, if it's pretty bad look for a good defense attorney just in case, you know, because hopefully the union has somebody, but it's, yeah, I've seen it in their eyes. It's like they're, and they go, well, this class count for that. I go, no, it's after, you know, you're taking it after the incident, you know, I mean, it, I guess it won't hurt, but it, you know, actually for what you need. And so it's, it's a bummer. And those are the things that we always try and, you know, our, what we do is we do it full time. So if people have they don't know what to do or they're looking for resources and if I don't have it, we'll look for them. If we can't find it, I'll look for someone else who may have it. And because it's, it's a tough job and it's, it's tougher now, you know, um, in this world, you know, cause it, as you know, there's just so many bad angles on cameras and, you know, people, things taken out of context and those are the things, you know, but ultimately we have to be our best out there. And those are the things we're trying to just give a tool because we, you know, we start our classes by why am I here? We are here protect your assets, your assets, protect your, you know, the do right by the department. So the department doesn't have to get social media. So you don't get social media and, you know, be better at our job. And that's it. You know, yeah, really great. And then, uh, and then you also mentioned uh, suicide prevention. So given it being, wait, before you get into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a question about disabilities. Yes, sir. Um, so you mentioned that 
you help uh, the community and officers kind of recognize um, and work with people with disabilities. And then you also work with people that have disabilities. Correct. Can yes. you just briefly touch on that? Because I know that's kind of a huge yeah. subject amongst one first responders kind of coming up onto a scene with someone with disabilities and they can't really recognize it right away. Um, so it's, you know, considered as a threat, right? Like, yeah, their behavior, like, it's different, you know, so I will, I'll touch on a little, a couple of things, but yeah, first our agency works with probably five to 10,000 ind individuals with developmental disability, down syndromes, autism, cerebral palsy, different things, teaching them how to be safe in the community, how to talk to law enforcement, how not to run, even if, like we had a, a master trainer who it was affected her speech, have your ID out so you can show. We have identification cards saying I have a disability, which I hate giving because it makes them feel less at times. But that's the point where you need to let the officer know that something is there and giving more tools. But we talk about safety, healthy relationships. We were, we help them walk through the court system. We're not legal advocates. We're just advocates. So we have, a, and we'd have a, a healthy relation course. It's 22 modules about creating a healthy sexual relationship, how to create friends, you know, and I know that that group, you know, needs it because I'm, as you, you were alluding to, I'm very old. I still haven't had my sex talk yet, you know, so, but it's us. <laughs> we want to give it to the individual development stability so they have the tools, to, you know, and ultimately live a life that's in this world because they're people, especially with people with autism, it's known as the invisible disability. So we had a gentleman in high school had a group of girlfriends that were all knew that he, he had autism and they were great. It was great. They, you know, he'd always hug them. Well, he, he wandered into a different group and started hugging them. Well, because of his outward look, he looked, you know, neurotypical or, or however they want to say it. And he was in the principal's office getting yelled at because you, you're hugging these kids and, you know, these women, they're upset. They scared them because of the look. So we can all, you know, uh, individual down syndrome is we can make a better visual thing, but we're trying to give um, law enforcement cues. So what we talk about is eye contact. What are you usually taught about eye contact? If someone's not making eye contact to you with you, what are they doing? Probably lying, lying, being deceitful, but mm -hmm. many individuals can't make eye contact with autism. They'll be looking over here and that's making eye contact. So we give that officer that tool or, or, you know, to sound, you know, they have an intensity to sound where our radio mics, our sirens, it's like screaming in someone's ear because that's sensitivity to sound. So there's and sensitivity to touch, you know, sometimes their skin's on fire when someone grabs you. And, and we talk about officers to front load, you know, like us, you know, we kind of get if an officer grabs our arm and, hey, we're going over here because you kind of know you're going there. But a lot of times they don't. So explain, hey, we're going to walk over here because the traffic's dangerous over here. Or I can't hear. It's hard for you to hear me. Those are the things we we try and give tools. And we have a lot of great reactions. I mean, I've had a captain come up to me after and go, oh, my God, I feel so terrible. Like, what happened? He goes, well, 20 years ago. That's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I banged on a window and the guy just freaked and screaming. And I go, I know what it is now. Now I get it. I piece it together. I go, OK, I don't think you did it on purpose, <laughs> you know, but yeah. it's it's another tool. And and that's what, you know, we were teaching so much in that field. Uh, I remember just teaching lots of safety classes. And I remember someone asked us if we would teach a group with developmental disabilities. And I left there going. And I had done some, a little bit, a lot of disabilities, like burn victims and maybe amputees and different things, safety and self-defense stuff. But but I remember leaving there. I go, oh, my God, they're the sweetest people in the highest vulnerable, vulnerable population, 90% of them. At one point in time, there was a stat saying that there could be a victim of violent crime, sexual assault, or fraud. And it's it's so high. And you're thinking, what? But people take advantage of it, you know, of individuals like that. So that's how we started a pretty robust program of safety, healthy relationships, individual trainings. You know, like I said, we go and sometimes they're, you know, sometimes they're just having bad issues. So we help them move past that with our one-on-ones. And like I said, the team we have for the regional center side and people with disabilities are amazing. They're just like, they're so great. But yeah, so we, so what happened was probably in 2007 or six, I was saying, man, I remember, I remember when I was in my academy, you know, and I remember, all right, we got to talk about the disabilities, uh, blah, 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 blah. And it was like, totally, <laughs> the guy was like super bored. Couldn't wait to get out. And then everyone else in the audience became super bored. And, you know, my crew, crew knew what I was doing. And they go, you're probably pretty pissed right now. I go, I'm pretty pissed right now, <laughs> you know, because it's it's an important thing. And it's yeah. better now. 
But I mean, and I just remember we had so much experience so that we built this program that law enforcement would have a better interaction, you know, just more tools and nothing super long. Like I said, you know, you don't have to decide whether they have cerebral palsy or Down syndrome or autism. It's, you don't need that. You just need a baseline to understand their behaviors will be a little different, you know, and they can't, you know, they may not understand. We have a, a fun little exercise. We, you know, it's, we're telling you to take a letter out of, you know, of a sentence and, and repeat it properly. And everyone's always in their head thinking, well, that's what, how they process at times. They don't really understand. It takes a while to process. So we just slow it down. And, mm-hmm. you know, and like I said, the, off, the officers and deputies in class are mostly very grateful because they didn't know. And it gives them tools. And a lot of them have, are parents. And some of them didn't know either. You know, you know, finding the right resources would always be there for a resource for them. Yeah. So that's how it kind of got grew into what it is now and then we got posts behind it and uh, they're they're very supportive of the programs and it's you know and i want to get it nationally because i think it's really important so yeah totally and thank you for that that's that's huge and not you know necessarily for the first responders as well but the community in general you know um a lot of people don't know how to handle a conversation because they're not used to it to their daily you know the day-to-day so yeah, I was, uh, I was in do. Costco and I remember the gentleman jumped in front of me at the meat section, you know, so, you know, we're guys or whatever, or whoever you think, oh, why do you do that? You know, but in my head, I'm thinking his behaviors were different. Mm-hmm. I saw something different in him and it just made me understand. And then after that, I received countless stories of individuals saying, oh, I was, I was walking and this person made me super mad, but I just realized I started watching their behaviors and their behaviors were different. And I go, that's what we want. You know, sometimes you're just jerks out there, you know, <laughs> you know, there's those, you know, idiots out there. And, but other times it's a person that has a behavior that doesn't really understand what they're doing. And so we can take our hands from being the white knuckler and to relax and kind of read behaviors. It's always going to make us better. We can read a behavior. So, but yeah, but yeah, I appreciate that. Of course. I mean, it definitely, we're passionate about it um, for sure. And it's about all levels of what we're doing. You know, I just, I don't know. We're just, we're, I'm in a fortunate place that if something is going wacky, we can try and at least create something that can maybe help and give tools out. Just like what you're doing. You guys are creating awareness for a lot of great topics. I went through your catalog, you know, whether it's finance or suicide or and it's, you know, it's, it's for groups that maybe don't, don't have as much out there and is understanding. So I appreciate what you guys are doing as well. Yeah. Thanks. And I'm, I'm curious to hear more about, um, your suicide awareness and what gets safe is uh, kind of how you approach discussing suicide and some uh, maybe some tips out there for our uh, well, our listeners yeah. other than them listening to us give tips about suicide and yeah I mean your probably suicide. tips are good ours is you know for me like I said it's it's creating communication and understanding and listening watching behavioral cues I've had four. Four, it might be five friends commit suicide. And each time it happens, I go, oh my gosh. One was a guy in the sheriff's team, which was a bummer, an amazing dude. And then friends, you know, and it's like, he just, you know, at the end of the day, then you second guess everything. And, you know, I'm kind of in this field. So I didn't think I, I mean, the friends, you know, it's one of those friends that weren't in constant contact, but I do remember one for sure that I felt like, man, he was so dialed in. He was, you know, executive protection expert, expert firearms, expert martial arts, and just an amazing athlete. And to hear that, you know, kind of know that maybe if I would have called and said, hey, what's happening? So really it is. And what we're trying to create in the schools is that communication teamwork, you know, where people, because you can, if you're taught, it's, it's that group mentality, you know, it's, it's creating a pack, you know, and it's, if you can see something of someone's. I don't know, maybe their fingernails are super dirty or maybe they're just super angry or maybe there's uh, hyper something else. It's, but you can start reading behaviors that are different. And those are the things we want to watch. Are they collecting it? And it's probably nothing new what you guys are doing. Are they collecting things? Are they saying goodbye? Those are the things we have to read. And that's what, you know, we talk to officers, you know, same thing. Just keep an eye on each other. You know, it's because it's, you don't know. I mean, people are built to hide it, you know, and, but there are sometimes tales that you can. And sometimes, like I said, I, I miss some and it's, it's a bummer, you know? And so those are the things that really just, you know, I always heard this term, whether it's God or whoever you listen to that, 
gave you two ears and one mouth because it's much easier to talk than listen. And so the more you can listen, you know, it's, you know, it's better because it's, it's harder to listen. And not sometimes as we talk and we try and, you know, we try to give our, our advice. And sometimes it's good. And sometimes you just need to listen and see where that person's at with stuff. And, and that's really what our, the basis of what we do is communication with a behavioral twist to it. And, and ultimately that's what we're trying to do across the country is just open communication with everyone so they can hear and listen. And, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, you know, law enforcement there, Hey, you're fine. Just get over it, go home, have a couple of beers and you don't know. And, you know, and, but now I, I it, to me, I feel like there's a trend that's shifting, you know, that's saying, Hey, you good. You want us to go grab a sandwich. We don't need booze. We don't need anything. We'll just go hang out, you know, and it's taking that time, which before it was very minimized, just get over it, punch in the shoulder, you're fine. You know, one of our, and that same gentleman, he, he lost his partner uh, in a shootout and he was assigned to the family. So he got nothing. He lot, had a great loss. He was there, you know, he lost his partner and then he was watching the family. So he had no time to grieve, no resources. Fortunately, he said he got in a dark place, but he was able to pull out of it, you know, and, but it's a lot of times we have to look and see if, Hey, you're doing okay. You know, without, you know, without making him feel silly or anything, it's just, you know, and that's where we're talking about the therapy can help, you know, this therapist we have in our area is, like I said, is amazing. And, and she, you know, is able to pull things out from law enforcement, you know, and it's, those are the things that we need. And also, like I said, just that, listening kind of see where you're at check-in we you know we like to call it a check-in do a check-in hey how you doing today you know and so like i said nothing magical it's just really using our ears to listen watching behaviors we all have that in intuitiveness that you can kind of see and say well most of us some are <laughs> dead inside but for the most part we can all uh kind of sense and feel things and, and that's what we do it like you said you're a nice guy you can bring your bear and say hey you know you know come you want to hug my bear give it you know something so it but that's you know i i joke but if that's the opportunity that people probably respect you and see that you're dialed in and you seem like you got it going on you know you're working as law enforcement and you know and you're you know you're in metallic military and now you're in the coast guard and see what you guys got it going on so people think you got it going on so they're not maybe not share but you say hey listen we all have struggles i have a friend who teaches relationship and he you know and I go, people aren't going to listen to you. You've been married for 30 years. Everything looks great. That's why you get on. Unless you get up in front and say, this is harder than hell. <laughs> you know, then people respect. I don't really like when people, and they're doing it, but I don't, I don't like when people get up and talk about how great things are when we, there's no perfect life. There is no way. And we yeah. see it every day with suicides of high level entertainers and actors and you name it. And you seem like their life on the outside is perfect, but, and then Facebook and doesn't help with that social media instagram doesn't help because everyone portrays this amazing life and then you read a 24 year old committed suicide you know oh my god you get to drink beer <laughs> yeah no one told me that and Coors Light I like Coors Light yeah 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 <laughs> um, but <laughs> anyway. gotta crack something when we start that's the beginning of the year. I didn't know you were cracking I thought it was just a timer fake timer oh uh, no 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 one donated to your timer so when you finish yeah. the beer I you cut me off. You just press end. <laughs> that yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that is it. Um, Doug, here, no, I, pretty quickly. <laughs> I, uh, I, I love it. And I, I do think there's a change within our community. Um, slowly, 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 very slow change. Keyboard, slowly, yeah. You mentioned something earlier with the training where it comes from the top, uh, the chief, the captains, and then mm -hmm. kind of dwindles its way down. But um definitely the more that you're able to get to departments and discuss all this stuff it, it doesn't it doesn't need to come from the top down it comes straight from you yeah yeah and i agree i i just like my thing when i said command staff is that they have to support it and understand it you know a lot of times they're old school and you know get over it and you know i think my department they they have a wellness program and they're really trying to push this kind of thing and but you see that areas like we see it when we go to more less funded areas they have little to no resources and they're and they see some of the worst things you know i had a gentleman who i remember it was a it, we had a two-day training and we usually don't but it was a train the trainer and i go hey he comes back in the morning hey sorry about making you come here he goes 
He goes, no, no, don't worry. But we had to go fish out a body that I went in for an overtime shift and fished out a body and come to us. And he said, but he, oh, I like the training. No resources whatsoever. Nobody to talk to. They're dragging bodies out. They're in a class the next day. They're working on four hours of sleep. And so, you know, I, I'm not sure how big your department is, the city of Daly, but, you know, a lot of them just don't have resources. You know, a lot of amazing departments are, you know, have all kinds of stuff, but we have to look at the smaller ones that their backups an hour outside. There's no such thing as therapy. 5150s, they take all the calls and, you know, they have to do all the therapeutic stuff. And that's not part of what they signed up for. <laughs> so, yeah, so anyway. no, no, not at all. And that, that kind of goes into our, uh, Kind of like what we're doing is normalizing mental health, normalizing, talking about it. And it's okay to reach out for help. And granted, a lot of people don't want to go through the employment assistance program and go through the chain of command. And that's why we're yeah. trying to create create a um, a place where people can do that safely and understand that they know it's it's confidential. It stays with, we, yep. with us. We can connect them to a therapist and we'll financially assist them. Uh, I can't tell you how important that is. Like I said, I, I mean, I'm, you guys are doing this a lot, so you probably know, but like I said, we did just in the last couple of years, 7,000 over seven, I don't know, maybe 7,500 officers and deputies. And I can't tell you that is one of the biggest sticking points is what exactly what you're doing to circumvent having to go and get your insurance and do this unless there's, you know, unless there's some kind of incident and then it's a legal incident, then they're more open to do it. But if you're just a guy who, or a female who saw something terrible, you know, a traffic accident or the same age kid as your kid, it's going to haunt you a little bit and you just keep it in because that's your job. It builds, you know, they say it just <laughs> it can go nowhere, but out. And, and that explodes eventually one day. And, you know, just to keep on that level of communication. And we talk about people, you know, it's the old, you know, you hear, you know, just have a group that you can talk about great times and you can talk about sad times, you know, and it doesn't have to be just law enforcement. It could be civilian friends. It could be a therapist. It could be a coach. It could be, you know, an outlet, you know, and then we talk about outlets, make them healthy, you know, obviously nothing wrong with drinking a Coors Light during a podcast, <laughs> but, <laughs> but water. Yeah. Minimal, but it's, minimal, healthy coping mechanism. Yeah. Minimal is yeah. good. When it gets too much, then that's where yeah, it's bad. And that's problems. what we talk about finances as well like i'm glad you had that lady on and i think it was i don't know if her husband was on too but because we see these guys come right out of the you know gate buying trucks and all of a sudden they're living they're working to live and you see it a lot in firefighters as well they have all every toy and they're working for the next overtime shift and eventually your body needs sleep you know so mm -hmm. so try not to overspend and you know so you have some money and you you know treat yourself but healthy yeah. wise you know, yeah so. and sleep is the uh Number one contributing factor to stress. Yep. And I, uh, we have a stat we use. I'm not going to get it right, but I'll just, they're going <laughs> to yell at me. But it's, I think it's something like if you're up for 17 hours, you're technically have a point, point one oh blood. You're not drunk, but that's how your body is reacting to things, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, I can get you the right stats, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, we have a sleep study that a guy actually gave us one of our classes and it's pretty amazing, you know, how much you do need sleep and, you know, and officers and deputies are working these odd shifts, you know, or it's not really healthy for our bodies to go to, you know, go to bed, you know, at, during the day and <laughs> work all night and, you know, yeah. so it just throws you off, but, and that affects it as well too. So, but, but yeah. Yeah. Been there, been there, done that. Yeah. I speak all about it. And that's why it's, it's such a, I think it's great for us with our backgrounds to be able to not just be two random dudes talking about mental health and yeah. first responders and vets and families. And it's like, we've actually, we have experience with this. So um, I think that's what helps us as well. So if you ever need a, uh, or a, a resource for get safe or when you go to these classes and make sure you oh, absolutely your card, whatever it takes, but um, if the time, if it feels right, like if people are saying, yeah, I, I'd never go through my department for therapy. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> any, anything like send them our way. Cause we'll, cause you might we'll, have to do a few more fundraisers, but yeah, I will definitely put you on uh, our resource list. Yeah. As, well, uh, uh, and it's a, it's a nice thing too. Cause we, uh, for our four spouses of first responders and then our one police officer comes out to like 17 or no, it's like 19, 1900 around there, give or take, mm -hmm. um, and then, so now we just did a, a donation uh, post on Instagram and 
I think we're at $150 now and just put it up Nice. like five, six hours ago. So, and that's a cool thing about the community too, is like when they actually see what you're doing yeah. uh, and know that it's going back to, yeah to good people, then they're more willing to help. Um, yeah. It's like that old saying, uh, you know, I don't know what's Gandhi or who, uh, how, uh, the journey of a thousand footsteps starts with one. And each time you make a post, each time you take one person to do something, you, that's one person you you've helped possibly save, you know, and those are the things that we see. So I'm definitely going to throw you on. I'll get all your information after, but yeah. I'll throw you on our website and uh, we'll just, you know, give a little thing of what you guys are doing. But yeah, I appreciate it. Like I said, it's, I love this kind of stuff because, you know, I have a podcast as well. You know, I have like, and it's pretty big. I think there's four viewerships on it. I think we're, we're trying to get to five. Um, <laughs> well, but, you, you just everybody, got it. We'll subscribe. Okay. Right now. Well, I, now I'm six. <laughs> I think that's 50% or no, that's 20% game. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's about the changing mindset, changing outcomes, which you talked yeah. about in the beginning, because it is, it's how we change our mindset. So if we can stop as you're trying to do, change that mindset regarding mental health. Your outcomes are going to be way more positive the moment you can do it. We change your outcomes about de escalation or what's the change that's going on in our world with different personality types and genders. Your outcome is going to be better for sure. It's, you know, it's like we all get that. I even last week, I remember how oh, things are going great. And then something happened. I don't know if it was a flat tire, then something else happened. And then I think I broke a nail. Like, oh my God, this is the worst week ever. <laughs> it's a nail. <laughs> you broke a nail. It's not health. And pretty much I'm usually, uh, you know, just very low key. And because I, I've seen a lot of, like you have, there's a, what can happen with health and death. Those are those really the only two things we can't do anything about. Everything else there is, mostly everything is a possibility. Yeah. What's that? And taxes. Yeah, you can't do anything about yeah. that. And so, taxes. I just text as much as I try, but no. Yeah. Um, no, but it's, yeah, you just can't. And, you know, I have small kids and they're healthy and, you know, we have stress at work or stress at home or stress during the day. It's like. It's yeah. just not that bad, you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it's it's kind of what we were talking about not being political. So many people come up. Can you believe their views? Can you believe that? It's like, really? Does it <laughs> let them do their thing? Exactly. You do your thing. Who really cares? You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's you know, yeah, you want to fight for what you believe in, but let's be, you know, let's not have a heart attack over it because it makes no sense. Right. But yes, but yeah, um, yeah. If anyone law enforcement wants to come to our website, it's getsafeusa.com. Uh, any questions at info at get safe my email is Stuart. get safe uh usa right, on uh instagram just get safe yes i don't know okay. yeah I, we'll, we'll tag you in our, yeah, yeah 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 i don't know back how to in get 1993 <laughs> no we'll uh we'll we'll, yeah. we'll tag get safe and put the website in the caption for the post yeah i appreciate it but yeah, yeah they, but... and if they have any questions about anything you know really that's ultimately what we want to do if there's any kind of issues that we can help or find help we will if we can't then we'll say yeah man we're, we're running a dead end but yeah. but yeah it's this is like you we're just out there to kind of make some change and that's what we're excited about so have an opportunity sure. but yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. It was uh, cool. It was kind of a blind date. Yeah. It was a little yeah. blind date. I love it, though. It got everything out, everything yeah. that you guys are doing. I love it. It's just, yeah. and it uh, it's kind of like this this episode for you. It could be one more person that hears about it could yeah. come to you or could benefit. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I appreciate it. And yeah, it's you, awesome. Uh, listen to a couple of our episodes. You should know how it ends, right? I, you know, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't get quite to the end because <laughs> no, I'm not that guy who jumps around. Like my yeah. pass is only yeah. 22 minutes. Yeah. yeah same. A little attention to well, deficit. <laughs> how we, uh, how we ended is, um, a beer. We have our, well, a beer. <laughs> no, no. We I'm have done. our, uh, a guest, um, explain what one more is one less means to them. So that, so one more is one less, one more is one less is our motto. Well, um, I, you can probably tell where I'm going to go with this. Uh, one more. Uh, officer or deputy that gets help mental health one less casualty one officer who can inter engage with a person with a developmental disability probably one less use of force incident or possibly a death one less person with a disability or a community member who respects the officer and just is respectful and doesn't carry in their biases is maybe one less use of force incident you know so those are the things we're just trying to do and I could go on, but I'm going to, in the means of time. No, <laughs> so, but yeah, that. it's, yeah. And that's truly how we feel at, at Get Safe. It's, and I always said, you know, I don't know if it's from Star Trek or whatever, but the needs of the many, you know, I'll take the needs of the few. Can't see you know, If we hit so one good. person, 
you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's, it's a good day. So. Good. Well, love it, Stuart. It was good. Yeah. Uh, it was good talking to you. It was good learning about get safe. I I've never heard about get safe before we started this. Um, I've never heard any other officers saying how you guys came to do a training with them. So <laughs> yeah. It, and it's cool. And that's, that's the awareness piece of this as well yeah. as like kind of what's out there. Um, so hopefully some people that are listening can yeah. maybe say, Hey, my department needs this type of training. Boom. And then send you guys out and then it helps. Me and a lot of it's already funded by posts. So remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the good opportunity. And, but yeah, you know, and it's, I'm, we're not the greatest marketers. We want to be better. Never even actually had any, do any marketing, but this stuff helps for sure. And, and I appreciate it. Yeah. If anyone out there in need or just wants to put some more information in their files or classes, we're here. Cool. Oh, sounds good. Well, thanks again, Stuart. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate thanks. Time. Appreciate it, guys. All, All right. right everybody, care. take Cheers. care. Hope you enjoyed the episode and stay safe. Yeah. Be safe. Bye.